Hi, I'm Ben, and today we're going to be answering some questions that I got through an email from Vikrant from India, who is going to be coming to Canada in January 2021. So that's right as winter is starting to take off here in Canada, and he had a few questions. I'm going to break this video into two different parts. The first one is going to be about e-bikes. The second part is about the gear that you can use during the winter for frost biking, which is biking during the winter if you didn't know. So without further ado, let's talk e-bikes. And uh, if you want to skip this and go to the gear part, then hit the thingy mabob up there or in the link in the description. I want to preface this as e-bike information at the end of 2020 going into 2021. And the reason is, is because I built this DIY e-bike in 2017 because I wanted to uh, add a little bit of assist to my bike. And there were so few options at that point. And since then, oh my, <laughs> I would do things differently now, put simply, because going into 2021, there are so many options for e-bikes that are all kitted out and all the wires are inside the frames and their unibody design. They, they are sexy now. <laughs> We will get into e-bikes. I'm just gonna start reading this and uh, we'll answer some of his questions as we go. Here we go, Vikrant. Hello, Ben. I am a biking enthusiast from India, moving to Canada around Toronto, so the GTA, uh, in January, 2021 for a job transfer. So going off of that, congratulations, but also welcome. And the first thing to note, especially from a cyclist's point of view, is the GTA is very sprawled and core areas like downtown, there's a lot of bike infrastructure. And even during the winter, there are a lot of cyclists, a lot more during the summer, not wintry months. But the further you go away from the downtown core, the less infrastructure there is and the fewer cyclists you are going to encounter, unfortunately, just because there's not as much infrastructure. So just keep that in mind. And this is where the e-bike does come in. This is why I have one because it just kind of lets you keep up with traffic a little bit better off the like stoplight. You you can take off instead of just starting in your lowest gear and just working your way up. You can just immediately floor it and not get crushed by cars. I was keen on biking to work, but I was deterred by the winter. I'm here to say, don't be deterred. It's totally possible and I've been doing it for three seasons. Yeah, since 2017. So it's totally possible. We'll get into what you need, but my number one thing, aside from the gear that we'll cover in the other video, is this front studded tire. Coming from a place, a city called Calcutta in India, totally botched that. I have no idea about how to confidently make my dream of biking in Canada, rain, winter, or otherwise come true. I have an answer to that, and it's the proper layers and the proper gear at the right times. Done and done. Oh, <laughs> and the will to actually do it. I need your help. Could you please guide me to the links and brands of all the staples that I need to equip myself to bike to work? Okay, so as I said, gear is in the next video. And in this video, we're talking about the e-bike itself. So let's get to the e-bike that I would recommend for you. You can either do it yourself or buy a pre-purchase one. But again, to be honest, in 2017, when I built this thing, there weren't that many good options out there for e-bikes. They were pretty expensive and they were very niche still. They're still fairly niche, but less niche because of the pandemic and everyone's like, oh, you know what? E-bikes are actually really cool. They're not just mopeds with motors. I mean, this one it kind of is, but I pedal a lot to say the least. Now, in 2020, if I had to do it all over again, I would straight up just get the Ride One Up 700 series. It's about after shipping and after like all the stuff that you'd probably want to get for it and things like that. It was about $2,500 Canadian. That's pretty decent because that's about what I've put into this. Now that also includes like a second battery and stuff. This is still kind of a better deal, but there were also a lot of things that went wrong with this bike. I melted some wires at one point. I had to swap polarity because I bought a second battery and realized that the one battery is the reverse polarity the whole time and the charge. There was so much random nerd stuff that went on that 100% if I would do it again, I would not buy all of the different parts. I would just buy that $2,500 Ride One Up 700 series or a Rad City. So Rad City is a little bit more upright, has similar pricing to the Ride One Up 700 series. You could also go like the Ride One Up 500 or any of the other Rad bikes. Those are the two brands that are really good value for what you get. If you pay like an extra grand or so, you have like torque sensors and it's really nice and things like that. But I've only had throttle for the last few years. You can definitely get by with that. 
The next thing to consider, especially in a large city like Toronto, which may not be as large as your city because population density in India is ridiculously high, but for Canadian standards, Toronto and Vancouver are pretty highly densely populated. So consider theft. You're gonna be dropping like 2,500 bucks on an e-bike, or if you have this, it's like, I don't know, 1,000 to 2,000 after you pimp it out with everything you want. Just get bike insurance, especially if your bike looks cool. If you're gonna be spending money on the, uh, the bike, you don't want it stolen. And here's my favorite thing about having this crap bike is I can leave it out when I'm grocery shopping and I don't worry about it going anywhere because who wants it? Like the resale value on this is so low. I love it for that reason. If you do get a nice, really nice like looking bike, like the ride went up. I would get one or two, probably two great locks. I'll put some links in the description. I have the Abus Granite X Plus 540 U-Lock. And another thing is a lot of the bikes come with quick releases. You don't want a quick release. Uh, what you want is something that's locked so that only you can take off your own tire. I have a pin, what is it? a pinhead four pack bicycling lock skewer set. So what happens is my seat can't be removed unless I have a key, which I do. And then the tire itself also can't be removed on the front. There is one for the back. I didn't install it because it's a little bit of chaos back there. So there's so much chaos that I even a thief has not yet in the last almost two years that I've been here, tried to even remove it. Cause like it's, you need to like a huge wrench and then you, no one's touched it yet. No one wants to, so. But on a new bike, you do the same thing because people will touch those very nice 27.5 inch wheels and they have like nice, everything slick about the new bikes, but that's also very like, people wanna take that. So defend yourself with the skewer locks and the locks themselves and try not to leave your bike out to prying eyes. There are a few things you can do when it comes to getting to work, when you are at work or when you're at home, basically the, the tail ends of your trips. Try to lock your bike somewhere that is either very in the public eye, but that doesn't stop thieves from like taking it. My best bet would be to bring the bike inside with you or lock it in a safe location. Up next is studded tires. I will recommend this in every single winter video that I do because it is so, important, not even two, just one, because if you have a studded tire on the back, congratulations, you can accelerate quickly, etc. Debatably, that's bad for the road itself, but worst thing is you don't have one on the front. So what you really want is maybe two. I just do one and I haven't died yet because if you lose traction on the front wheel, you're so screwed. You're going down so fast. It's the equivalent of grabbing a fistful of front brake on gravel and you turn and it's just and you will go down very, very quickly. It hurts so much. I actually did slip on gravel because I only had front brakes at the time because I hadn't fixed my back brakes. Don't do that. Keep both of your brakes in working condition. Actually, another good thing about that ride went up and a lot of the e-bikes that aren't like this piece of crap are they have disc brakes. So your brakes are a lot more reliable in the winter. Rim brakes, Stopping this heavy, heavy bike, which is, I think it's like 70 pounds plus me, I'm like 150 or 160. That's a lot of weight for rim brakes to stop, especially when they're wet or they're clogged up with ice, etc. Disc brakes are key. So that's another thing I just randomly thought of. Oh, there's a woodpecker right there. Hi, little woodpecker. All right, where are you? That's cool. Hello, little guy. Okay, that was enough entertainment value for right now. Um, anyways, studded tires, put one on the front. You don't really need one from the back. You can if you really want to, but I've survived this long with just the front tire being studded. Another thing about studded tires is at first they look really expensive because they are, but remember they'll last you like at least three or four seasons, maybe five or six, depending on how much you bike. I was biking every single day for the last two years on one studded tire on the front, and I still probably have two seasons. So yes, I think I paid, <laughs> I got on Kijiji actually secondhand, so I paid 60 bucks. Normally they're about like 130 plus tax, so let's say 150. It's an initial big purchase, but if you have the skewer locks on the front, your wheel's not gonna get stolen, your tire's not gonna get stolen, then you're good. I think, hopefully. Another important thing to consider when you're using an e-bike in the winter is that you have a superpower. You have a superpower of cooling. That sounds weird because you're biking in winter, 
And you're like, wait, well, don't I want to stay warm? Yes, but that's why actual, the bicycles with motors are much better, in my opinion, than the moped style ones, because you can actually pedal. I pedal a lot when I do this. I just go super, super fast. So I get both exercise and speed out of my bike. But that generates heat. So both in the summer and in the winter, if I overheat too much, I use a little bit more throttle and I go a little bit slower with my pedaling because I can easily show up to work during my seven kilometer commute. I can show up sweating. I can be a puddle by the time I get there. And that's not very, one, attractive, but two, like it just takes more time to then like shower down and do all that. You don't want that. So instead, the e-bike motor allows you to be more chill about your commute and you can regulate. Think of the throttle or the assist level on your fan dangled new like ride one up or rad bikes as AC, pretty much. You can like undo a few of your layers to cool off or you can regulate yourself by biking just the right amount to stay nice and toasty warm in your layers of layers of layers and layers. But you can also use a little bit of the, the, the motor so that you don't overheat. That's a weird thing to think. A lot of people think you just freeze in the winter when you're biking. That is so far from the truth. Unless you stop or break down, then you, <laughs> that sucks. And then you wanna kind of be prepared for that and be ready to call a cab or an Uber or something. But I, I just wanted to point out that really, it you get hot biking in the winter and the e-assist actually makes it so you can cool down. Okay, I mean, I think I covered everything. The, the next bit of this email is to do with gear, and that will be in the next video because there, there's, there's a lot. Thank you very much, Vikrant, for sending that email to me. I don't, I don't know how you found that. I think you found it somewhere on my website, maybe? Either way, if anyone else other than Vikrant wants to know anything, leave a comment in the comment section below. I get back to a lot of people because I don't have that many subscribers, which is fine. YouTubers who don't have that many subscribers have a lot more time for you. So if you have any questions, you can either write me an email or comment in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you. I'll either reply or make an entire video like I did for Vic Grant here, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!